Buonasera, welcome. Um, my name is Matteo. I'll be the host for the day. I'm just going to turn on our uh, video. Bear with me. Here I am. So thank you very much uh, for taking the time to join our uh, webinar. I have to be totally honest. It is our very first uh, virtual uh, presentation. So I hope everything goes straight up. I did light up a few candles for the IT gods. So hopefully uh, there'll be no issues. Um, however, if you do need, there is an option of uh, captions or subtitles as part of uh, your the, uh, Zoom uh, options. Um, however, I'll make sure you're nice and comfortable. Grab a glass of wine if you have one and let the Sicilian sun shine in. Um, first of all, I was just going to let you know a bit more about me and us um, as a company. Um, Backtrack uh, has been uh, running uh, operations since 1984, so we're now 40 years now. Um, and uh, they started with uh, more uh, trekking outlook on travel. Uh, now we have developed uh, three special interest uh, styles, which is uh, trekking with Ray Baker, African wildlife discovery in, uh, by overland or four wheel drive with Jim uh, Drapes and uh, food and wine wonders of Italy with yours truly. Um, by the way, um, if you have any questions, um, there is an option of the chat box. Um, Naomi will be answering the, uh, any Q and A's you might have. Um, and if any um, questions got answered, I will uh, address them at the end of the presentation. Uh, also apologies for my uh, vo rocky voice, as of course I had to get up with um, a bit of a cold uh, yesterday. So sorry about that. And we start as now. Okay, a bit about me. Um, I was I'm actually Irish Italian. I was born in Florence um, in the in the hills of Tuscany. So I grew up with uh, Chianti and steaks and that very well um, table banquet there is in front of my parents' house. So obviously growing up in uh, um, what food is uh, all around us, my um, my mother, she studied international cooking in UK, but uh, when she moved to Tuscany, obviously um, some of the nonnas, the old ladies uh, kind of felt bad that she couldn't cook Italian food and uh, pass on all the secret recipes. Little they knew that she'd be gone and uh, uh, wrote a book. Uh, but obviously they just want to make sure that uh, the kids were fed. Um, so I've um, started mainly my career in hospitality, but extended to um, running guest houses. Then I joined in a tour operator. So I worked pretty much in every aspect of hospitality and tourism, even running my uh, tours of the Uffizi in Florence and so on. So I'm very, uh, I could say quite safely about 20, 25 years of experience uh, in the field. Now, this um, uh, new adventure started in 2017 when I put together um, my first tour of Sicily, the round in 2018. Uh, the main drag for me was the uh, slow food has been the one of the fundamental um, aspects that I wanted to include it. I've come across that when I was about to take on a restaurant, small restaurant in Italy, which was totally slow food minded. Um, so obviously that has always been something that's interested me uh, growing up in a rural environment. Uh, obviously, I'll pick a fruit from the trees and have fresh um, produce from the market every day, really. So I just realized that I took that for granted. And after 15, 16 years in the British Isles, I do realize the value of it. Um, particularly as the uh, slow food movement uh, tried to protect biodiversity and uh, bring back the old ways, really. It's the organic, uh, which our grandparents used to uh, use because there was only organic. So we kind of have to uh, go back to, to that, to the origins. I'm also uh, very keen and develop a, uh, uh, tours in Italy that are going a bit off the beaten track. Particularly in the last year, um, and last last year as well, um, Italy's been absolutely overrun with tourism, and 
a lot obviously is in the same beautiful locations but uh, Italy has a lot more to offer so I uh, then decided to spread out to all the regions of Italy one or two at a time uh, so more in depth um, more about the wines the food the history everything is uh, into one so I started with Sicily we already had a couple of successful uh, tours obviously we had a gap of three years thanks to COVID but Sicily is definitely um, a very interesting spot. It's a, size, a third of the size of um, Tasmania, but uh, has a very intricate history, starting from uh, the, um, the Greeks when they first settled in and Mycenaean, um, the earliest Greeks populations. And then the, many others invaders, as we call them, uh, took on. Uh, but the good thing about it is every single invader between uh, brackets uh, actually left some history, some culture, some food, language, architecture. So everything turns into this cauldron. And um, as one of um, our, uh, our guides, Luisa and Palermo said, Sicily is like a lasagna. It's got many different uh, strata, many different levels, and they all intertwine to this um, Bring out this beautiful culture that it is. Um, one of the most interesting parts is um, during the Arab, uh, there was a one point the Arab rules and uh, Norman were actually co-inhabited at the same time. Um, and the basic thing on them, they had uh, the population of Sicily had to speak at least one of the two languages. So um, there was really little illiteracy back then. But um, and that shows in the, uh, well, the quality of people, um, knowledge in general, really, and about their food and about the, the passion of it. Uh, moving on, this is actual our itinerary. Uh, it's a 16 day itinerary. We'll uh, start in uh, flying into Catania, which is one of the two main airports. Uh, moving down south onto uh, the Valley of Noto, where the, our first uh, accommodation is. Uh, we'll have four nights there, one night in Agrigento. And we have three nights in Trapani, uh, two nights in Palermo. And then we go off to the island of Salina and the Aeolian Island for three nights. And then the last two nights in Taormina um, is bring us the end of the tour. On day one, uh, depending on, on uh, arrival time, we do prefer um, people to arrive in the morning. We don't have a, a set time as yet because uh, it really depends what everybody's doing. Uh, rarely people just go in uh, for the tour, so they'll be doing stuff before and after. And uh, we're just making a decision based on uh, who, um, who arriving when and make it work for everyone. That's um, so. The first day would be uh, visit in Noto, which is only like five minutes away from the hotel where we're staying. Um, it's partially um, pedestrianized uh, town, so I'll be able to walk around safely and uh, uh, get lost in the little uh, streets. Um, it is uh, one of the three main uh, Barocan towns back in 1693. There was a massive earthquake in eastern Sicily, which is totally wiped out um, most of the buildings. Um, and that's why a lot of the buildings now look like this with sandstone, because they're being rebuilt uh, in Barocan style by the Spaniards. This is the, our first hotel, is uh, Villa Favorita. Um, it's um, a... Hotel, uh, the hotels in our tours are just a bit more than just a place where you go to sleep. Uh, I select them based on the history and uh, they need to be fit in certain requirements. Obviously comfortable, generally four star. Um, this in particular, it's, um, it's been running for um, basically since the 13th century. It's been owned by the same family. Uh, the the family that owns and now the Signora, um, uh, uh, I just remember her name. Um, sorry about that. Uh, Signora Corrada, that's right, and uh, Julia, uh, her daughter. 
uh, running the operations at the moment with the typical Southern Sicilian hospitality. So on, uh, on the first evening, they will uh, um, tell us all about the history of the building and uh, in front of a glass of bubbly. So any uh, interesting questions will be the time for it. On day two, which is the actual first day of the itinerary, uh, we'll be visiting the city of Ragusa and the town of Modica. Uh, Ragusa is a pretty, um, again, uh, very affected by the, uh, the earthquake. In fact, is now split into two uh, cities, uh, two parts, well, the, the old town and uh, the new town. The old town uh, was totally wiped out and only the rich uh, um, aristocracy were able to rebuild the uh, whatever they could, uh, while the new town is where um, people less affluent had to move to. And um, obviously, um, as you can see on the uh, far right photo behind me, uh, that's the Duomo of Ragusa, which is a very interesting um, uh, building as is put on a slightly off centered so they could see the dome and uh, everything uh, from any angle of the square. Uh, from Ragusa, I will uh, move on to uh, Modica. Modica is the famous uh, town for chocolate, it still is. Uh, this is because back in the uh, Spanish times, obviously they, um, the Spanish will bring in uh, chocolate from the new world and then um, produce it. Some of the artisans picked it up uh, in uh, Modica and become very famous uh, as a result. They were producing it in um, its uh, granulated sugar and in the cold production. So uh, you will find uh, pieces of um, rock sugar in it, but it also had no added fats. In fact, only contains the cocoa butter uh, naturally present in the coca beans and the sugar crystals. You definitely get to taste some of it, which I highly recommend it. On the same day, uh, we'll basically head back to the hotel first for a bit of rest and a refresh. And then uh, in the late afternoon, we head off to Mazzamemi, which is um, in the southern point of Sicily. Uh, on clear days, you apparently can see Malta. From there, there's only about an hour and a half um, by ferry. Um, here we'll uh, we'll wander around the town. There's a, um, a famous shop uh, that produce uh, a lot of uh, fish uh, goods. They'll have like a um, tuna pates and pestos and uh, all sorts of uh, yummy uh, goods. Then uh, after that, we're just wandering around the town, have a, um, an aperitivo or a, a, a spritz or something, uh, before heading to um, the Cortile Arabo, which is one of my favorite dining experience in this tour. As you can see, Massimo, the head chef, uh, clearly with Arab twist. I mean, uh, he speaks perfect Sicilian, but you can tell he's got North African uh, features. Um, he's an absolutely incredible guy. He manages to keep the tradition, but given his own twist, it goes to incredible levels as even producing this um, emulsionated uh, oil uh, mousse, which you basically need to whisk every um, two days, keep it in the fridge, and so it, extremely elaborate, uh, but not in a um, you know over fancy way. It's actually um, it's a mix between a, sh a theater and uh, painting with food. Literally, that's the only way I can. Uh, uh, it's not actually literally painting with food, but it's definitely a. Um, uh, opera d'arte, as we say in Italian, so like uh, 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 opera. The next day, uh, we'll go and meet uh, one more um, um, slow food ambassador and uh, in very enthusiastic chef, uh, Andrea, uh, which is the bold guy there on the right-hand side. Um, he is not only an ambassador, he's famous, uh, he's had a few stints in uh, Italian TV, um, going, producing, um, you know, cooking in, um, shows. He will bring us basically through all his suppliers or the main ones that we can visit on the day. Um, the slow food uh, presidia, um, there is the uh, Palazzolo Acreides sausage, which has been uh, produced in the same way since Roman times. Um, these are the black pig right here is the type of pig they use. is uh, more similar to a wild boar than uh, 
than a pig to some extent. They live uh, freely, they have little fat on, uh, very tasty. Um, and uh, he will uh, bring us to the table the produce that we went to uh, to see. And we can see how he interprets um, the territory and his production in his uh, meals. Absolutely incredible, great guy. On day four, uh, we had to Syracuse. Syracuse, um, obviously one of the main um, Greek uh, settlement from the start, also home to Archimedes, um, also home to one of my favorite temples in Sicily, a, oh, sorry, temples, rather a uh, um, Duomo, so a cathedral. As you can see above my head is actually being built onto a Greek te um, temple, so therefore, retain some of the structure from the temple. And uh, this is pretty much Sicily in a nutshell. That's um, the rebranding of buildings, the rebranding of food, the rebranding of um, all aspects of culture, really. Um, so in, um, in Syracuse, we'll be visiting uh, Ortigia, which is a little island in the city center, uh, which is remarkable, has a remarkable uh, element in there is a, uh, a, a freshwater spring, which is right next to the, the sea. Um, and that's why the, the Romans, set, uh, the Greeks set themselves there at first, because obviously um, water was, and it still is a very important part of setting a uh, city. So uh, there after we meet up with uh, Enzo, our guide, and he will bring us through uh, the city center and show us uh, obviously all the, uh, the main parts. Uh, at the end of which we uh, we meet up with uh, Damiano, who is a, a slow food uh, journalist, and he will uh, walk us through the markets and uh, show us all the produce to make us tastes and uh, uh, before having lunch uh, in a local um, cafe at the at the market. And after that, um, Damiano is not only a journalist, he's also the husband of um, Alessia in the photo here on the right. Uh, she's um, it's going to teach us how to make arancino or arancina, which is two very different things. You might think arancino is one rice ball, but it's more complicated than that, obviously. In Sicily, there's two factions, the one from Catania and the one from Palermo. The one from Catania are uh, pointy because they resemble the, uh, the Etna mountain, while the one from Palermo is round. Uh, to complicate matters, one is female, one is male. So arancino, arancina, and there's a big like squabbling about that, who's right, who's wrong, but it um, doesn't matter. It tastes, they both taste amazing anyway, so just don't tell them. Uh, so then from, uh, we leave uh, Noto behind us and uh, we uh, make our way uh, west. Uh, we're heading to uh, Agrigento, but not before stopping at Piazza Armerina. Um, Piazza Armerina is, it's a new, um, we just added a stop uh, to the tour. It wasn't included in the first two I produced. I'm extremely happy I did include it because the, um, the Roman uh, villa that we'll be visiting has some absolutely incredible uh, level of craftsmanship in uh, um, the mosaics right there. I have been visiting uh, many ancient history sites in uh, Italy, Greece, even Libya, but I never seen um, anything of this extent. is absolutely uh, huge as well as incredibly detailed. Uh, they um, they represent some of the animals that were present um, in Sicily back in those days. So even uh, tig uh, lions, uh, obviously no longer existing. From there, we, uh, we finally arrive in Agrigento. Uh, Agrigento is famous, obviously, for the Valley of the Temples. Um, we'll be spending the night in Baglio di Luna, which is in uh, pretty much, you can see the temples from, from the beautiful Lush Garden. Um, from there, we'll have, um, we only spend one night here, but this was um, a, um, a, look, a watchtower for uh, um, keep an eye on the Arabs invade, invaders. So it's it's an incredible spot. Uh, the main building, which is that one in the middle photo is actual, the original part. 
uh, and it is a tower. And whoever is um, staying in that section, you have to have a, a spiral, very narrow spiral staircase, uh, which I was lucky enough to be able to do carrying the client's uh, luggage. So not something I would recommend. Um, we only spent one night in Agrigento uh, before moving, keep moving uh, west. Um, obviously in the morning, we'll uh, visit the Valley of the Temples itself. Um, it is UNESCO heritage site. It's very much so important that it is actually the UNESCO um, symbol. Uh, as you can see, right about me, no, this, this right there. Uh, it is actually um, the UNESCO heritage site um, symbol, as I mentioned. Uh, after our visit to Agrigento, uh, Valley of the Temples will stop in Shaka, a uh, coastal town for a lunch over the harbor just to break up the journey on the way to Trapani. Um, so Trapani uh, will be staying at um, um, Antiche Saline, Relay Antiche Saline, which is um, so flats, really, the soap pans in um, just outside of uh, Trapani. It's a magical spot. On one side, you have the sea. On the back, you have uh, the mountain there in Mount Erice. Um, the place used to be, uh, still produces salt. In fact, is a uh, slow food uh, presidia for salt and a museum. Very interesting on how they've been running uh, the business for uh, three generations. And uh, as of 2013, they uh, uh, finally set up the, um, the hotel as well. Uh, absolutely beautiful spot. And um, that we will spend three nights there. Um, on the day seven, we head to uh, Erice, which is right, as I said, the, the mountain behind it. And we'll get there by gondola, uh, if the weather permits. That um, it is in, an incredible spot, it was set up by the Phoenicians and, um, and right at the top of that mountain. I don't know, uh, obviously great view to uh, defend themselves, but also, Sorry, my nose is affecting. Um, but also has a pretty much a microclimate of its own. So even in, in the summer, when it can be nice and warm at the bottom, it, once you get up there, there's like two or three degrees difference and potentially winds and quite often it's got a hat on, as they say. Uh, basically, the um, clouds tend to stack there. I remember the first day we uh, first tour went there it was actually perfect because it was cloudy the whole time. By the time we got there, the clouds disappeared like I paid them to. Uh, so everybody and pretty much enjoy the views that uh, if we were just there an hour earlier, I wouldn't be able to see. Uh, Edish is a lovely little town. It's all uh, stone paved, so a bit slippery, especially if it's wet, but worth, uh, worth the time to get around. Um, it, one of the the stops that uh, was one of my favorites is the um, Maria Grammatico uh, Pasticeria. Pasticeria. Uh, you can see the photos there on the right hand side. Um, she was uh, basically uh, a orphan that she got taken in by the uh, nuns, and uh, and in the kitchen of the monastery, she basically picked up and learned all the secrets of the pastry chef. Um, uh, of the nuns. Uh, the nuns where you sell um, pastries in order to uh, pay for the bills and uh, any upkeeping of the monastery. After that, we head to Scopello, which is the photo on the uh, bottom right hand side. Um, it is at the edge of the Zingaro um, National Park, uh, absolute blue waters, turquoise, crystal clear. Um, a uh, special, um, a really special spot on that corner of Sicily. Um, day eight, uh, we head down south to Selinunte first, one of the um, one of the most extended sites, um, Greek sites in uh, in Sicily. Um, despite that, the town only was pretty much active for a couple of hundred years. Uh, that's because then got in uh, first took over by the Carthaginian and then completely destroyed by the Carthaginian. Um, that was um, pretty much we left half buried until about last uh, century. Uh, back in the 60s and 70s, unfortunately, 
uh, a lot of the locals just went in and helped themselves for uh, pretty much anything they could. Apparently, the guide was telling me even they were going there with trucks at nighttime to pick up some of their columns. So there'll be a lot of stuff there lying about in private gardens. But luckily today, um, a, uh, a German university and American university are still discovering um, areas of um, the famous site. After Selinunte, we head to Marsala, which is an important town for Italy for two reasons. One, the Marsala wine, and two, the Giuseppe Garibaldi, uh, um, the famous uh, conqueror, we'll say, that freed Italy. And um, so, so Marsala wine, first of all, is obviously not something that everybody enjoy. It's a fortified wine, so a bit similar to sherry. And um, so my dear friend, uh, um, Chaco, uh, or his name is Francesco, I call it Chaco, um, he is a very enthusiastic chef, and he um, is the ambassador for the Marsala wine, really. He really wants to uh, bring it out to the world. He puts together this, um, let's say, food itinerary of um, dishes inspired to the different types of Marsala. So it goes from uh, uh, lighter to stronger in alcohol content. And, um, and again, this matched perfectly with the dishes they produce. Um, I'm a bit, uh, the feedback I got from the clients, which is a bit same way I'm thinking, is not something that I'll probably go out and buy myself a bottle of masala, but in that uh, location, in that place, is an incredible experience and everybody enjoyed it. And then from then, we move on to, uh, we leave the um, western part of the island behind, we're going towards Palermo, not without stopping in Morreale, of course, one of my second favorite uh, Cathedral, um, absolutely encrusted with uh, mosaics, um, mainly glass um, tiles produced either in Venice or from local artists, um, is an, an incredible spot. It almost looked like a, uh, a mosque from the back when it probably was at some stage as well. And um, we'll definitely um, spending a good hour uh, looking around. And uh, those of you that feel like I can go on, onto the roof as well. Uh, after that, we'll uh, stop at the Barrique wine bar for uh, a little light lunch before heading into Palermo. Uh, Palermo is a bit shocking at time for people. Uh, it does look a bit run down and even potentially dodgy. But I can assure you that's not the case, as I've been uh, two or three times. Uh, it does look a bit run down. Some of the buildings were not even fully restored after the Second World War bombing. But um, every corner uh, of the city has got so much history. It's got so many secret gems hidden, like private gardens, private uh, um, palazzos. In fact, we'll be visiting one in particular. I won't tell you too much because it's a, it's a part of the surprise. Um, but um, it is a very multi um, multicultural city, so much so they even have um, the um, names of the streets in, uh, in Italian, Arabic, and Hebrew. Here we're staying in Palazzo Brunaccini, which is um, basically bang on the center, really close to the Ballarò Market uh, next to the uh, uh, National Library. Uh, very convenient for obviously visiting the city center. Um, the history behind it, uh, because Brunaccini is actually a Florentine name. And in fact, it was a Florentine family that uh, um, owned, owned the building and built it up. Uh, it was actually the, um, let's say in uh, 1700s, uh, Luc the princess Lucrezia Brunaccini, uh, she basically became pregnant very young before getting married, which is back in the day, not, uh, not okay. So they uh, pretty much sent her off to Palermo. And she actually set up this um, place for the orphans of rich people, the upper class people to uh, uh, the fall into poverty. So um, she was trying to um, basically help people that fell in uh, of grace like herself. 
So from there, we got, um, as I mentioned, the Palermo, Palermo market. Uh, there are actually three Palermo markets, but we'll be visiting uh, Ballarò, which is the most convenient for us. Um, Again, an absolute symposium of colors, tastes, and uh, sounds, people screaming, uh, trying to sell their produce. Um, it is extremely lively. You definitely feel a bit, I mean, I had the same feeling of when I've been to Cairo, Amman, is, there's something that link all the uh, Mediterranean uh, markets, really. And in the afternoon, we head off to uh, Cefalu, which is a famous, uh, well, it was only a fisherman village, but is a now uh, it's a hotspot for um, tourism as well. Then from there, the next day, we we'll jump on the hydrofoil and head off to uh, the Aeolian Island, in particular Salina. Uh, definitely one of my favorite spots in the tour. Um, I could just stay there for days and days. Um, Salina was particularly famous as um, the people in Salina refers to uh, Australia as the eighth uh, of the Aeolian Islands. In the 60s, back in the 60s, there was uh, actually more people from the Aeolian Islands and Salina in Australia than there was in uh, on the Aeolian Islands. Um, that's because about out of 7,000 people, like 5,000 people left. They move over here, uh, particularly Melbourne and, and Sydney, of course. Uh, but uh, from there, they um, they all pretty much become very successful. And those ones that are left behind are on half of the islands, like Antonio, the driver. Um, there we stay at the Locanda del Postino, a beautiful spot overlooking um, Filicudi and Alicudi, the other two islands. As you can tell, I already been uh, become part of the family there, even though I'm a full head above everybody else. Um, Mauro and his family are absolutely gorgeous. Uh, the food is incredible. The hospitality is beyond. Um, literally, I could move there if I could. From there, we'll be visiting. Uh, we have three days there. So we have had another night compared to my previous tour because I think uh, relaxation is part of this tour. It needs a break. So there we'll be visiting on the one day um, the town of Lingua where we stop uh, at, uh, which is basically an Italian Australian uh, restaurant as they spend half of the time in um, Salina and half of the time in Sydney. And uh, we'll stop to have a fam famous granita, a lemon granita especially helps the digestion so I can eat more. Uh, and then uh, we'll jump on the boat and off we go to Stromboli. That's obviously weather permitting. Um, not before stopping along to have a dip in the mid blue turquoise water, the Mediterranean. The journey to Stromboli is quite of a long one, so therefore, once we get there, we will stop in uh, and visit the town to have a break, uh, and then after we grab some dinner, light dinner, we'll go back and um, go all along the other side of the island, trying to see the Sharra, which is the the eruption uh, of Stromboli. The following days, as um, again a full day in, in uh, Salina, this time we will visit the slow food presidia of the Caper with uh, uh, Salvatore. He uh, produces all sorts of uh, produce uh, with uh, capers such as and salt uh, or uh, pates or the sauces, uh, but he also conveniently produces wine, which is always helpful. Um, he does three types. One is the uh, Malvasia, the famous grape from the island, but tend to do a, a, a sweet uh, wine. The last time we were so lucky, we actually got to see a, a sperm whale as well. Doesn't happen every day because there's only about 100 left in the whole Mediterranean. So that's how lucky we were. And here we'll be visiting, uh, right behind me here is just a photo of the um, Museum of Immigration. Uh, which would basically tell the stories of people that moved to Australia. There's some, you know, bad, like the suitcases and letters and stories. So it's very interesting if you know of someone that uh, came from there, um, we can definitely dig out more about their story. And the final stop is Termina, the last two days. Uh, that's, uh, we jump on the hydrofoil, then at about an hour and a half, uh, we're in Termina, just in time for lunch, of course. Um, and then after lunch, we'll go for a stroll down uh, the main road, uh, main drag, um, all the way to the famous Greek amphitheater. Um, it's absolutely beautiful surrounding backdrop of the turquoise um, 
um, Mediterranean. The one, the further in the middle there is Isola Bella, which is only um, at the bottom of the, the mountain. Basically, you can get there by gondola as well. Here we stay at the Hotel Villa Schule, which is one of the, I think is the oldest uh, running hotel in Sicily uh, owned by the same company. Uh, Villa Schule is actually, obviously, as the name suggests, is not very, doesn't sound very Italian because uh, Gerardo's grandfather moved from Germany and set up this uh, hotel back in 1907. Um, it's, it's got extremely um, a great mix of uh, Sicilian hospitality and German efficiency with a, a large, um, large breakfast a la carte and as obviously the habits of German tend to have a larger um, breakfast and a uh, smaller lunch. Um, so uh, absolutely convenient is, um, you know, you can see the views from there and uh, at the back there's a, a beautiful garden and through the garden you can just basically, there's a walkway and you can in, straight into the main, uh, the main drag. Uh, our final day of activities, uh, we head up to the Etna uh, volcano. Hopefully to see uh, um, clear skies like uh, the one in the photos. Um, we were extremely lucky uh, last year because we got there and there was actually not a cloud in the sky. You could see all around, as you can tell from the photos. Uh, fast forward an hour or so, uh, the clouds have moved in and couldn't see much. Uh, but after that, uh, we'll head up to Bronte, which is basically, I would say, probably the world capital of pistacchio. As you can tell, they'll do anything with pistacchio. We have the crostini, we have uh, the pasta there, and even the coffee with the pistacchio on. Um, definitely one of my favorite things to eat when I'm there. However, they do only have a stay year on, year off. So, so far, we always end up there when there was no harvest. Nevertheless, the tastes just as good. And here's the end of the tour. You basically finish up the, uh, after breakfast and everybody go their own way. Uh, this is Giuseppe there, our driver, uh, uh, absolute gem. He's uh, um, always go the extra mile. We'll call his mate and bring us some, some biscuits at the petrol station or something like that. Uh, he's an incredible, um, a great ambassador for Sicily. And this is all the details you need to know. So it, um, starting on the 10th of October and on the 25th, so uh, 16 days all included, uh, 15 nights. Uh, we, need, uh, we need a minimum of five people. We already have two booked on. There's only 12 maximum. Uh, there's only two single supplements available, although potentially more if you need to. Um, so there's two uh, available room for upgrade. That means you will get the best uh, possible room um, in each hotel. Price is 6,400 euros, which works out to be just uh, 10,450, um, which is not bad if you consider that you're basically not going to need your wallet for the whole duration of the tour. Um, bookings are open for just two more weeks, so don't miss out. If you want to go, now is the time. And that's pretty much all from me. Um, do we have many questions and have to answer? No, oh, that must have been pretty good then. Hmm. Okay, well, um, definitely available. We'll follow you, uh, follow you up with an email if you have you think of anything else or you need any additional information. Uh, look, otherwise, uh, look forward to bringing it to Sicily with me. Grazie mille. Ciao.